Hi, I'm Iris Fritz. I'm with the Elfman Student Success Center at Dunwoody College of Technology. And I'm here today to talk to you about the relationship of Ohm's Law in a series circuit and in a parallel circuit. I've drawn a parallel circuit up now so that we can start to have a feel for what happens now with a parallel circuit and what the advantages of a parallel circuit are uh, versus the series circuit. And there are times when we want to take and combine the both to do all kinds of beautiful work for us. But before we ever get there, we have to have a sense of how these electrons are flowing down the wire and how they're distributing themselves in something like this. Now, let me just give, if you will, let me apply a voltage to this circuit. I'll put a negative here and a positive here, because right now you know as long as I offer a positive potential, these electrons will leave the source and they will start to flow down the wire. Now, what I want to do is I want to do what I call a redraw and just redraw this over to the right. So I'm going to pull this, remember this is just metal so I can bend my wire. I'm going to bend the wire, I'm going to pull it over here and I'm going to just redraw this circuit quickly and then we're going to have a talk about it. I leave the negative potential, I leave the negative and notice the first thing that happens and still I want you to use the analogy of those electron cars going as fast as they can down the wire to get some work done for us. And then of course our resistors harness the energy that we can get from putting resistance in the way of something that wants to move really fast on the wire. Friction is our friend. So going back to this, let me bend these wires and let me draw this circuit right underneath here. This is what we refer to later on as a redraw. And you will, if uh, when we get into combination circuits, we will absolutely rely on our ability to redraw to help us understand things in the circuit. So I'm bending the wire, I'm just bending the wire up, and if I bend this wire, I move down the wire, and then what happens? It splits, and you can see that it splits right here. And how we show a split in a redraw of an electrical circuit is this way. It splits, just kind of like the road splits. And on one side of the split, some of the electrons will trickle down here and go through R1. And if you will, total current here, some will go down this way, and some will continue to move down the wire that came from the source, and you will have another resistor that will come in right here. So, some of my electrons will go down this way, more will come down this way, and then you can see it splits and continues to travel down here. So again, redrawing this, a little hard to verbalize. All of the electrons come this way, they flow, some split, come down R1, on the other side here from the source, this is all straight wire, I have R2, straight wire, I have the top of R3, and at the bottom of R3, notice at the bottom of R3, the wire hooks up to the bottom of R2, hooks up to the bottom of R1, this is all wire, and then it goes, the bottom end of all of these go back to the source. And that's what it looks like if I do what we call a vertical redraw stretched it out and put it up here so we can have a conversation. Now if you look at this, and I have a hundred volts available, I want you to notice something. From negative to positive, straight wire here, between my fingers here, I have a hundred volts available. Notice the voltage potential of a hundred volts is available over R1 as well as R2 as well as R3. So you'll notice in a parallel circuit voltage is constant. Voltage potential, 100 volts, just a wire here, 100 volts, a potential available for R1 as well as R2 as well as R3 and let's talk about what good that is. If I have 100 volts available here, let's look at current flow. I have all the current coming down to this point, current total here. And then what happens is some trickles off this way, some of my current will go this way, 
and then the rest of it will go down this way. And I will go through here, and if this was a light, lighting this up, going back to the positive, this current flow will through, flow through R2, coming back to the positive, and this will flow through R3, coming back to the positive to, to add up to the total current flowing through the circuit. So what do you notice with something like this? Voltage potential, voltage, is constant. The voltage potential offered to each of these resistors is the same. But the current flow, total current, is now being split up between one, two, three different current paths. So total current, total current adds up. And how we would add that up is we would take the current over the first resistor plus, the current over the second resistor plus, the current over the third resistor, and this would total up to giving me the total current through this network. Now let's look at Christmas tree lights again. So like I said in the last piece, with a series circuit, one light goes out, meaning the filament breaks and it's open, and I have no current flow because that, if you will, path that that electron was taking has been disrupted and there's no positive charge or positive potential to draw those electrons out and get work done for me. So one light goes off, they're all off. But in something that's wired in parallel, this changes because of this constant, if you will, voltage potential offered to each resistor. So let me redraw here. We saw that it split. I had R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R3. And now I want to talk to you about what happens when maybe R2 opens up. Now R2 opened. So notice, current, here's my negatively charged particles. They're leaving current flow comes through this way because there is a positive charge here. This is just a wire. This is just a wire. I have negative to positive. I have, if you will, the appropriate conditions for flow to come through and go this way. So I have current flow through this, so this light is on. But this one now, negative to positive, doesn't exist anymore because this opened up. And it's kind of like the bridge went down, if you will and I have no way for these electrons to flow through. I have no positive potential drawing them down this way. So instead what happens is those, the remainder of the current flow comes down this way where they can get through and go back to the positive charge because that is their sole purpose. Those negatively charged particles have one and only one purpose, to get as quick as they can to the positive. So here, with something like this, if I would draw a little light bulb, you can see this light's going to be on, and this light is going to be on. But here, because this is open, I will have no current flow, and that light would be off. And I like this kind of 400 light wiring much better than a series circuit because one light goes off and I know exactly which one is dead and I can replace it.